all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show second for today so carolyn is first dds is second hello guys how are you and then we have simple garden algebra bean and more folks would join and as here hello so um how was your long weekend uh, l hello rajesh hello i actually spent a lot of time sleeping for the first two days uh, sleeping in the morning or you can say waking up late i was trying to heal my arm and my hand and then um sunday evening i became very nervous that i haven't worked so i sat down the night of sunday and i worked till 2 or 3 in the morning and i created three lectures and uh, recorded them then on monday i sat down and edited one of them actually live is easier because i'm just doing it in case of recording you have to record it then edit it put it together and then present it so i edited that that is the 32 ivermectin questions that i um, uh, presented on the other channel so i did that there are two more talks that i have done which i didn't have time to edit so my half half of the long weekend was just lounging around and then the remaining half was working okay so now let's see dag says and nipa gandhi is here nipa thank you very much number one for sending that document from the uh, indian bar association and secondly thank you very much for sharing your daughter's songs she sings so well Uh, i am so proud of her so dag says if the virus rna had introns it would not translate correctly so the correct you are correct that the viral rna messenger rna of this of this virus would directly need to be translated but we know that this viral rna only translates the polyprotein first and then that polyprotein gives rise to enzymes which then would get the remaining duplication of the rnas and they do pre processing of the rna and cut out pieces which make various other proteins so this virus also has sub units and this particular study showed that open reading frames may have some introns that get translated into dna and that is where the problem appears but good point <laughs> Susan says, "Sorry, got sidetracked at the pencil sharpener. I hope you're okay." Uh, Nipa says, "Thank you, Nipa. Thank you very much, actually." Um, Rajesh says, "I've met in thirty-two. Was very nice. Thank you very much." So Nomi says, "Have you come across the presence of spike proteins in blood of vaccinated people?" That's what we just talked. One of the studies that shows how this can happen. Then there are other studies. For example, I think there is a study from Japan. which say that we have measured them and we saw some of them in ovary and so before so i'll talk about it but before we become too scared of these please realize this that in the trial after the vaccination there were women who became pregnant and uh, i remember that at least with one of the vaccines the women who became pregnant in number were more in the vaccinated side than the other and i was saying that here vaccine has helped so um, so far that is not the ovary damage or the inability to conceive has not been observed that doesn't mean that there are some spike protein not running around the quantity the concentration uh, is it from the broken cells is it from this kind of a study i have that study here on this monitor that is why i keep pointing here is it this mechanism we don't know yet so i'll talk more about it I was so sure that today we'll talk about diabetes but then this became so much that I just got so many messages left and right that I thought I should talk about it. <clears throat> Smoke curl says I recently got vero cell based vaccine but strangely the magnet sticks to my injection site just wonder could it be due to the aluminum in the prep maybe so until i see it 
but maybe so uh, nick says did you know that ivermectin is derived from ivermectin which is a bacterial postbiotic seems to support my dysbiosis theory i was actually over this long weekend thinking to invite you nick to have a discussion and talk about the probiosis so tell me if you are ready maybe we can have you and have a talk yes so trevor that came to my mind as well that aluminum is normally not magnetic um Brianna Brianne Dressen says, I got the AstraZeneca vaccine and unfortunately ended up with neuro symptoms that mirror long COVID. This has happened with all brands. What can we do about this? So Brianna, um, I have uh, written a few possibilities for how to handle long COVID. I think with your doctor's uh, agreement and supervision, you can try, for example, ivermectin is the first one to try, then steroid is another thing to try, then Fluvoxamine is another thing to try, and then antihistamines are another to try as well. So there is a number of things that can be tried, but please do it with your doctor's advice. John Snyder says, aluminum doesn't stick to magnets, yes. If Iram says, good morning, Dr. Mubin, good morning, Iram. <laughs> Texas says he. I remember where, where, where I first teased Dr. Bean that vaccines got women pregnant. Yes, so rem remember we had that discussion uh, where actually there were more people, uh, more women becoming pregnant on the vaccine side. So you remember it, Texas. Um, and you made a joke about that too. So Lewis says, Lewis, where? Did I see your protocol was done? Yes. Actually, that was the first thing I did. What happened was on, on Friday evening, Saturday is when I did, yes. On Friday evening, I had a long chat with Dr. Corey Pierre, and we, we just made fun of each other, and we talked about it. We talked about his hair and possibly a comb and and many other such things, and he made fun of me for certain things and so on. So we talked. and. A part of that was he said, dude, my team keeps asking me for the protocol and I keep saying in my heart, Mobin, where are you? So uh, I said, I'll do it tomorrow. So I did it. He had then uh, said me uh, that uh, hold on to publicizing it. We are getting ready and we would uh, then um, provide a message then when we're ready. So he said, don't, don't say too much. So that's why it stayed. After one tweet, I stayed quiet. So Rajesh says, Dr. Hector Carvalho gave the best solution, aspirin seven days before and 10 days after vaccination, thinning blood. Correct. So we should just have the blood thinners. Um, Rizobit says, love 32 questions, I have a Mecton video. Thank you very much. Actually, it was funny that inside were 33, but there was one question that was redundant. So I did not put that little bubble for it. So it was 33, but I there were 32 that I counted. So in the video, I say, so these are the 33 questions, but in the titles, I said 32. So what I'm proud of is that I did that in 22 minutes. And it can still be further cut. There are still some extra sentences that can be removed. So um, Sami says, is there any way to increase CD4 cells, CD4, CD8? Uh, Sami, number one, the supplements, healthy nutrition, and then uh, relaxed system. And then at the end of the day, it still has to you, if you're going to talk about medicines, then you have to talk with the doctor. So sometimes the raw material is less. For example, B12 is less or folate is less or the other iron is less. So you have to be, they have to do labs to figure out why. Samantha McConnell says, 
Question, would a messenger RNA vaccine be dangerous for someone with thin blood? My blood is showing high platelets, but on the thinner side, I think it is the test. So generally, these vaccines are fine. There is a chance of thrombosis. And so that is what the doctor has to see the bleeding time and understand it and then decide to do the uh, allow for the vaccine, for example, and then they have to supervise it. I am very afraid of talking about blood thinning side and then saying, go ahead, do it. Because if thrombosis occurs, it can cause stroke, it can cause heart attack, it can cause a lot of issues. And just looking at a question like this without proper history and labs, I am I'm not able to answer. So Nick says, did you contribute to iRecover protocol? Was very good summary, thanks. Um, that is the protocol that I uh, wrote. Of course, Dr. Paul Marek has his own protocol. And so they are going to merge them. But that is what this protocol is that I sent. Gold Country says, so as SARS memory B and T cells have survived 11 years in bone marrow, then natural infection inferred immunity may be similar. Your thoughts? So yes, uh, Gold, I have been saying this for some time. And somebody had left a message as well, I think, on Discord that Mubeen had been saying this for a long time. I had been saying that the SARS-CoV-1 immunity with the B cells lasted for two years and then declined for one more year, but lasted for three years total. And the T cell memory lasted for 10 years. So we are seeing that. And that is what uh, should happen. Nomi says, proud to see Pakistani origin doctor on forefront to help humanity. Thank you very much. And there is a uh, comical little levity here. People think I'm Indian. And because of that, when somebody becomes upset with me, they make fun of me as an Indian or they make fun of my accent. So in that process, they uh, unfortunately, they end up calling bad names to India or folks from India. And so my apologies to them. But most of the people just assume I'm from India. So um, Red Poor Jack says, uh, Dr. Bean, are you aware of any RT-PCR tests to COVID, for COVID that employ low cycle threshold under 35 and who would possibly? No, I'm not. Although research labs have them, they can have a lower threshold because it's just a setting on the machine. But I do not know if there is some such test available. So Bipul Singh says, you had said that spike proteins don't cross the endothelial cells. So how come the spike proteins were found in the blood? So that is a, uh, I discussed it today as well, that to bring a spike protein to the blood, we have to do a lot of things to bring it there. So for example, we have to bring it to the lymphatics, not catch it. Then from lymphatic, bring it to the lymph node, not catch it. Let it go. No antibodies, no cells, nothing. Then from lymphatic, it has to travel with the blood to the heart and then from heart in the circulation. Or let's say it is given in the deltoid something and that thing has created spike proteins and that spike protein has leaked out of the cells. Then the local area, there has to be enough inflammation that the blood vessels open up and allow these spikes to enter. And then when the spikes have entered them, we have to prevent them from immediately attack, attaching with the ACE2 receptors in this vicinity and just go around in other places. So there are lots of given to be had to to kind of end up with this. <laughs> so Texas, I just saw your comment. Uh, Jody says, if I had thin blood, I would stick with Avermectin. Uh, Steven says, why do we consistently forget, forgot to promote the drugs and tests of the companies I have invent, invested in? Clearly, there is a quality problem. <laughs> Steven, I'm so sorry. Please send me the list. <laughs> that is funny. Um, 
So what would you say about JNJVX in someone with IgG deficiency? So IgG deficiency generally can have lower immune responses. And so any VAX, not just JNJ, can have partial response and incorrect response. So just talk with your doctor. They may have to give you IgG when they give you a vaccine. So Bipul Singh says, can lactating mothers pass the spike proteins to their infants? So I know where this question is coming from. This is from the, uh, what is that woman, Alex, someone who had this uh, professor from Canada who was saying that spike protein is going to get into the uh, milk as well. And from there, going to go to the child as well. So I have to look at those mechanisms to discuss it. I actually wanted to discuss that today, but then this became more important. So, and I know I have to discuss the inflammatory state of the heart with the vaccines. I thought actually I'll be talking about diabetes today, but here we are. <laughs> Deline, Deline says, I love hearing Dr. Bean laugh. My heart smiles. Thank you very much. This is how it is. Uh, some people become so upset with my laugh. They actually tweet at me or write comment to say, stop giggling. And this is how I am. So I've been like this from ever. What Evermectin has to do with thin blood? So Jody, you made that comment. <laughs> so you respond. <laughs> So Susan says, India and Pakistan are like Canadians and Americans, a little <laughs> worst. But um, I have never, in my teachings, actually, my majority of my students are from India. Uh, oh, let me back up. 50% of my uh, students are from US. In the remaining 50%, uh, majority is from India, then from other countries, including Pakistan. <laughs> Fran says, I love you, Giggle. Thank you very much. Somebody somebody put a comment, uh, tweeted at me to say, can you explain this? And then they added one sentence at the end. And don't giggle. <laughs> so I like, fine. Uh, Bilal from New Jersey. Let's say if this is the case of what you talked about, do you think it's going to be any treatment for those vaccine haulers or they leave those people to suffer waiting for the damage to happen? So Bilal, are you talking about this hypothesis? Look, there is a very important thing to keep in mind. And that is in the, I showed it that authors were talking about it as well. And that is the rarity of this. So if this hypothesis is correct, even then this mechanism has to be very rare. And so that means you don't have to be sitting here waiting. We should be deciding still clinically how to manage someone with, with clotting, regardless of what is underneath the mechanism. We should know the mechanism. But at this time, we should figure out how to help when somebody has gotten uh, the clotting. <laughs> Stephen says, thank you for reading my question. Very welcome. Um, <laughs> Roller Girl says, I love your giggles especially. Thank you. So you are spoiling me now. People are going to become even more upset. Um, so Luis Grande says, are some of these spike gymnastics Hypothesis possible given one to zero point five one one million effect. Look, look at it this way. Forget about all mechanisms for a second. Clinically, this is happening. Whatever it is rare or more prevalent, it will become prevalent with some or not. Regardless of that, clinically, there is a mechanism that is happening. So we have to figure out what it is. So if folks are doing uh, work to try to tell us that, hey, maybe this is what is happening. But still, how worried should we be, the laymen who are looking at this and lay women who are looking at this and saying, OK, now we are doomed. That is where I wanted to come in and at least show that this is what they're talking about. They themselves are saying we're still working on it. And uh, this themselves are trying to figure out if that is a mechanism, then why is it not more common? So uh, don't be too worried. If I got your question correctly, Lewis. Christine says, Dr. Bridal said he read on verse that a nursing mother who had wax reported an intestinal bleed in her infant upon feeding, he said it's unconfirmed. But look, one more thing. This is correct that this can happen. Um, at the same time, exceptions will be there. There are people in whom variants are made. 
we are seeing variants. So they're made in some person. It's not that 10 people sat down together to say, let's make a variant. It is one person whose body generated a variant. There are people who are developing clots. So there is some mechanism that is happening. Is that the vaccine adjuvant or is that the, the splicing issue? Or is that the heparin induced therapy the antibodies that are cross reacting with platelet factor four, which I think is more um, possible than this theory or it, a fourth theory, we don't know. So these uh, things are happening. I wish they were not happening. I also wish there was no SARS-CoV-2. And when I got the vaccines, I was scared as well that, hey, who knows what would happen? My wife, it took her, what, now two months? Today, she said for the first time that I'm feeling better, that I do not have that much of inflammation and joint pains. And on this process, she took anti-inflammatories. Then she took black seed oil, and she said that has really helped. Then she took antihistamines, and she said that did not help. And um, now she is actually, since a week or so, she's been taking iron, which is important for not only red blood cell formation, but other cell formation. And she's feeling better. So it, maybe it is the antibodies that are just going down in general. She thinks it is iron. And so she and her doctors are figuring it out. Point is, this is happening too. So Super Knight says, if we start taking blood thinners, is it possible to leave them or they have to be taken lifelong? So if you don't have a pathology to take blood thinners, but you're taking it, for example, let's say for a vaccine, then you don't have to keep it lifelong. But normally what happens is doctors put people of my age, 50 years and above, on baby aspirin or small blood thinners lifelong to reduce the risk of uh, uh, heart attacks or strokes. So Christina says, Christine says, yeah, for Mrs. Bean. Yes, thank you. She's doing better. Uh, Colum Colombian Coffee Bean says, have you had CV-19 patient with GIT symptoms only, how do they present? How does treatment differ from respiratory symptoms? Very interesting. So I had one patient who would develop respiratory symptoms, but very mild, so mild that she would not even care. But she would continue to develop nausea and diarrhea and abdominal cramps. And not only this, she recovered from that, then she would develop it again like a long hauler. So uh, in the beginning, the idea of long hauler was not there. This is the early uh, last year. So I did not know what to do when this just kept happening. And then um, hydroxy was the one that helped. So Julie says, how do we get the word out to the medical community in a way that they will listen? There are so many vaccine recipients who are suffering neurotype inflammation like me. So Julie, this is the problem that people are collecting things in verse. But I don't think that verse, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think verse is resulting in action by the um, healthcare leadership organizations or vaccine companies. The behavior is not modifying. So verse is just like a catch-all. Hey, you have a problem, throw it in there. Thank you very much. That I think is wrong. So going back to your um, basic question, I think it depends who is the community. If you're talking about the leadership organizations or mainstream media or um, leadership health organization, then they are not going to listen. At least I am disappointed in them. So I don't think they would listen. If they listen, I'll be happily surprised. I would say thanks to them, but it looks like they would not. Then there are folks like me and Dr. Corey and FLCCC and others who are trying to do what they can do. So um, I actually agree with you. There is a important point here, and that is people with vaccine may be ending up with long time symptoms too. And we have to make sure that we can get ahead of that. So Elizabeth said, did you hear your YouTube video with Dr. Corey? So Dr. Corey had told me on this Thursday or Friday, he said, hey, I'm going to be on a Black Horse podcast. 
and then he said it is possible that i'll be on joe rogan as well so more power to him it is good and i have not heard <laughs> i am so bad at listening to the other um videos when i'm preparing so i was preparing for the discussions today francis thank uh, mrs bean thank you very much and jody that is correct because the kind of uh, pathology with vaccine is similar to pathology with the virus and that is spike protein so if the spike protein itself is sitting around then ivermectin would help so donna says question please just a word on black seed oil italia bean um black seed oil i have done a discussion before a full length a uh, study that was published from pakistan so it has shown black seed oil with honey has shown to be very very efficacious brianna says we have been buried we have begged the cdc i don't think cdc is going to help um i think it is going to become more grassroots that people coming together we all coming together and trying to find solutions cdc who fda nih they as i sometimes say they do not know their elbow from some other parts of theirs um so let's see <clears throat> question in continuation blood thinners increase sugar and hb a1c and cause issue with lfts as well any way to counter these side effects so this would have to be that you talk with your doctor and see what is causing it and then uh, so when you say continuation is it that for lifelong if that is the case you may need to change the type or you may have to add more medicines change the type or dose so rajesh says please uh, share black seed oil protocol of mrs bean so what she did was uh, as i and her had been doing before as well and that is just take one teaspoon full of black seed oil that's what she was doing daily JLB says you returned refueled. Thank you very much. Denise says if he gets on Joe Rogan, then it's all over. Yes, absolutely. Patrick says, "Just take, just take what Donald, Donald Trump took." So, if you're talking about the uh, uh, solution for Do Donald Trump's when he had COVID, so that was, uh, I believe, still that region run was a very important thing in there. Uh, Frankie says, "Is this phenomena expected to happen with all vaccine recipients, or just?" some i'm catching this talk in the middle so frankie i've done the discussion before this one authors themselves say that it seems to be more possible with adenovirus based vaccines because the transcription is happening inside the nucleus and their mechanism banks on intra nuclear rna production problems and they say messenger rna produced by messenger rna vaccines or present in the messenger rna vaccines does not have these issues and so they should be safer although then the question is why are these vaccines causing clotting and they they responded to that and said we are still trying to figure it out brianna says what are your thoughts on future vaccine formats coming available so i think that in the future the adenovirus like vaccines should not be used we are seeing the the effect similarly inactivated viruses for example for sars cov 2 could be dangerous uh, i love more the messenger rna based vaccines the curiosity that i had discussed a year ago is still it stands and that is is it possible for these nanoparticles to en enter blood stream end up in liver and accumulate there or accumulate in other cells and in other tissues and just be there 
So is that possible? And that is what I do not know the answer to. Sweetheart says, thank you for that Q&A. You're very welcome. Uh, Super Knight says, can the antibody cocktail serve as a vaccine as well? No. So antibody cocktail would immediately take the virus out or try to take the virus out. In that process, when you recover the patient and stabilize them, it is possible that their immune system would have generated antibodies. And so they may be OK. But itself, the antibody cocktail is not going to help make long term antibodies. Uh, Louis says, the telehealth across state lines, emergency authorization ending, wondering about getting ever to patients. So, yeah. So I think that doctors will have to start uh, collaborating with each other. Stephen says, thank you for a great lecture on an important research announcement and then a fantastic random chat. Thank you very much. Um, So Shashank says, some time ago, we talked about the sanitized nitric oxide nasal spray. Did you manage to talk further and have they published any meaningful results? What I heard last was that they were approved in Israel and one more country. And um, I did not see more after that. It says that there are so many things to focus on that it just, <laughs> so maybe France and Holland we need to figure out a way with that Reddit and prioritizing the topics and see what is of interest and work on that. So um, Fauci has said it is highly unlikely to culture live viruses beyond 35 cycles. Stating what is found is just dead nucleotides. I cannot find any test under 35. So how are they any accurate? <laughs> that is an answer that Fauci has to give if he said that. Bilal says, I know some people suffering from the vaccine over six months, including me, two months, and your wife, two months, with their symptoms subsiding. Is, is that means the body could heal by time? Yes. So it's very simple. So I tell this to my wife as well. And it is funny that she has her own doctor and uh, they, they are working on uh, her situation. But whenever I get a chance to talk about what is happening, here is what I explain to her. And actually, what I said is something that is happening. So let's say here is dose one. Here is so in her case, let's say dose one. This dose itself causes immune system to start responding, and the immune system antibody levels would continue to go up because there are active cells that are making antibodies, and they are produced, and they are proliferated, and they are differentiated, and they are making antibodies. So they would continue to go up. Then at some point, immune system would realize that the enemy is not here. It's gone. It's not there. So then those cells that were made, new B cells or new T cells and they, that were active and making antibodies, they would start dying. Some of them will be kept as memory for future. When these guys are going to start dying, then this immune, this antibody system is going to start declining. I remember when there was this study that came out that, hey, the authors have found that the SARS-CoV-2 antibodies decline after two months or three months, 90 days. Well, that's normal and natural. I, I don't understand. So for authors to say that is interesting because now they have a print out there. But this is how normally things work. So these cells would stop functioning, reduce functioning, then die. Some of them would continue working. They'll go to bone marrow, live there, and continue working for a long time, but at a very basal level. So the antibodies would start going down. So let's say this takes two months. In some people, three months. In some people, four months. In some people, one month. And during this time, let's say these antibodies are causing, these antibodies are causing uh, inflammatory reactions, including long haul type symptoms, joint pains in case of my wife and so on. So eventually when this would decline, then these symptoms would reduce and go away. And that is what I'm seeing after two months. She's saying, hey, I'm feeling better. She thinks she's feeling better because of all the things. I think she's feeling also better because the antibodies are actually declining.
So MSP says, will antigen test still be positive around antigen test two months after infection? After continuity of infection, then yes. But generally, infection is resolved within a few days. Virus is removed in a couple of weeks. Some people say that, hey, people say five days. It's not a hard and fast rule. Five days or seven days. Everybody's immune system is different. So a few days after the infection, usually when your symptoms have started to recover, the virus is starting to go away. So would it be there after two months? In some people, it may be, for example, long haulers or the viral DNA or viral spike proteins may sit. But usually, it has gone by that time. Gabriel says, question, my type 1 diabetic nephew has been sick for a month after vaccine. Doctors can't find anything wrong in his labs. Could ivermectin help or affect his diabetes, assuming it's a vaccine long haul? So again, I do not know what sick exactly means, but there must be some symptoms. Uh, ivermectin should be tried. It, it would not affect too much with the diabet diabetic side. That should be separately controlled. But ivermectin should be tried. Laura says, and Laura, thank you very much for sending in your shirt with Luffy on it. So thank you. So they found swollen lymph nodes in November. November, They were still there in January. Doctor X like my labs were good, but he doesn't know the COVID markers. I had most of them. Hmm. So how about lymph nodes? Have they become normal now or still swollen? Bipul says, is 2-deoxy-D glucose effective? So I did a talk about it, at least from what is reported in trial and approval. It is effective, but now they're using it. We have to still see. Um, James says, do you know about diabetes 3 and COVID? I'm just worried. We know that in some cases, COVID can cause pancreatitis and cause diabetes. That is one. In some cases with the SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV, they did some research on the people who had SARS-CoV. After 10 years, they became diabetic before their age fellows. So there is some long-term effect of the infection that can cause chronic diseases. And that probably is because of the original damage to the cell. For example, let's say the, so if we have, the, let's say this is the pancreas. In the pancreas, what happens is it's kind of a truncated pancreas. It looks like a gun. So in the pancreas, let's say we have beta cells, correct? And these, they, these job, the cells job is to produce insulin. Then over in type 1 diabetics, autoimmune system attacks these cells and starts killing them, or the um, immunity causes the abnormality of the insulin and so on. But in the type 2 diabetics, what happens is over time, the beta cells start reducing. They start dying, just like other cells do not regenerate that much. So these cells start dying. And normally, when I think about more than 90% of them are dead, then the person becomes insulin dependent uh, diabetic. Before that, they are diabetic that can take drugs or that can control it with sugar and others, but oh, sorry, with diet and exercises. But once they have destroyed their um, lymph uh, beta cells enough that they cannot, these cells cannot make enough insulin, then they become insulin dependent. So now, if I go back to your question, the, and the discussion that I was doing that in some people, they became diabetic earlier than others. The reason for that is, let's say there are two people. This is person A and this is person B. Person A and B started with the same number of um, beta cells. So let's say, just for our example, 100 cells. And these 100 cells, one cell would die every year. And so they are good for 100 years. But this person got COVID and COVID caused pancreatitis, and out of his 100, it destroyed 50. So now he's still not diabetic because the remaining 50 are producing enough 
insulin that is fine but when these cells would continue to die now he is counting down from 50 and 50 and this person is counting down from 100 so this person will become diabetic earlier that is a kind of uh, effect on pancreas and then during the acute disease because we take number one there is stress number two there are uh, things like steroids that can poke or that can reduce the uh, response to insulin and that can cause peripheral resistance to insulin which can cause temporary diabetes so maximus says what is the latest percentage for pfizer efficacy from real world population studies what will you want you do after vaccinated so uh, pfizer's uh, result from israel actually showed it to be a very um, equal to the the way the trial result was in some cases i'm trying to recall while speaking in some cases it was better having said that the second part of your question what will you do won't do after the vaccination so i got vaccinated with moderna i kept taking my ivermectins and supplements and everything the only thing i sometimes now feel would happen is that i can be mask less now or I can probably, for example, today I met a friend after a long time and I was able to sit down with him and we had lunch together. That still, there is no guarantee, right? There are people who are vaccinated who are getting infected and then dying as well. So there's no guarantee that I had the vaccine and so I should be fine, but the chances improve. So balance says, is there still a risk for blood clots past the three weeks mark? I'm 18, eight weeks past j, &J. So no, the time frame, five days to 17 days peak, or oh, sorry, not peak, median nine days. What does that mean? It can start from fifth day and it can start up till the 17th day. In 50% of the people, it has started by ninth day. So eight weeks is many more than this nipa says my super chat not showing what do i do i have no idea actually i'm, I'm seeing that um maybe they blocked it <laughs> nipa i have no idea i can't see it either so but thank you very much denise says question doctor you should go donate blood for red cross to get antibodies checked yes i should okay we'll do um Bilal says, what is your point of view of hypothesis, the case, if the blood clots didn't happen in first week, like we've seen, could it happen in months later while the spike is still freely there? So please don't, uh, <clears throat> don't pay too much attention to this yet. Look at the clinical side as well. The vaccines are being given. If these kind of hypotheses were true for general they may be true for a smaller cases for general population, then they will be just issues everywhere. So number one, number two, spike proteins after months is a very difficult thing to have. Spike protein pieces may be sticking in the cells for months in long haulers or vaccinated. That is an interesting one to know. The debris of this, the, the virus or the vaccine generated spike proteins may be there. I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Carlos has a good question. Hi, Dr. Bean. I've heard both sugar and alcohol mildly suppress immune system. Do you think drinking and eating sugars daily for a few days after vax might help prevent immune system over from overreacting? So no, no, short answer. Diabetes suppresses the immune system by causing damage to it and by giving no nutrition to it. So that is not because of the sugar. That is because of the lack of sugar inside the cell and abundance of sugar outside. We call diabetes um, poverty in abundance. The sugar is present, but cells cannot eat it. So that doesn't mean that more sugar is a case. That is actually because of less sugar. And same for alcohol as well, that it causes liver issues. So no, please, if you wanted to balance your immune system, take supplements, and then you can take 
anti-inflammatories and those kind of things to kind of balance it down if you want. But please talk with your doctor. Don't get in trouble. Brianna says, uh, Dr. Bean, I, I would love this study to be reviewed. Which study, Brianna? Art Patron Forever says, some doctors claim a vaccine provides more robust immunity than acquired immunity developed from recovery of a person from infection by the wild virus. How can an actual doctor believe this? So, <laughs> so good thing that I don't believe it because I've been saying it for, I don't know, from ever, that it is kind of incorrect to say that a person who had recovered from the infection should take a vaccine. And this weekend, long weekend, a student who is a doctor, she was a student when she was studying and now she's a doctor, she called me and she said, my parents and myself, all three of them, she said, we all got infected last year somewhere. One was in August and she was she got it from hospital where she works and so on. And she said, now we are scrambling to get ourselves vaccinated. And she asked me that my parents don't want to have a vaccine and should we get the vaccine? And I asked her that, why would you take a vaccine if you have recovered from an infection? That means you're protected. And you even if, let's say, your immune system is not making an, any antibodies, did you not make them when the actual infection occurred? Your body figured out a way to hen handle it and remove it, whatever it was. Why are you looking for your antibodies? So then she said, well, the thing is this, people say for variants, you should take vaccine. And here is what I responded to, uh, uh, said to her. Maybe it is useful, maybe it is not useful. Here is what it is. Current vaccines that are made, these were made for the wild type. These are actually not made for variants, correct? And unfortunately, what I'm saying, is you, you're going to see very soon that these companies are going to come in and say, we have made vaccines for variants because they just want everyone to keep getting the vaccine. So now when I say things like this, people think I'm an anti-vaxxer. And then when I talk about vaccines in positive light, they become very upset that I'm an anti-vaxxer. So no, I don't flip flop or I did not choose my position differently. This is This is my position. I am a pro-vax. At the same time, if you have, in a healthy way, become infected and recovered, why do you need a vaccine? So let's see. Wild type is the one against which the vaccine was made. Now we have a variant because the message is take vaccine for variants. So let's say we take a vaccine because variant is so different that we original infection would not cover it. So we need to take a vaccine. But guys, the vaccine is actually for the original type. How would this cover the variant if the original infection doesn't cover the variant? Until there is a vaccine that says, I am specific to 617.2. Now you're stuck. Because now you're thinking, all right, man, that means other vaccine is not going to take care of it. Or my original infection is not going to take care of it. And now I'm in a problem. And I'm going to go take a vaccine. Fortunate for us, they have not, not done it yet. They would do it soon. I know this. So I said to her that this variant argument does not even stand. Then she said that, hey, um, I think that some, so, so there are many ways. Just like there are many theories for folks who do not want to have a vaccine, there are theories for folks who are pushing for vaccines. And so she said that uh, there are people who are saying that, vaccine generates more robust immunity compared to um, original infection. And I, my answer was the same. Whatever vaccine does, if you got infected and you controlled it, who cares what vaccine does? Robust, not robust, good, bad, whatever. You have taken care of it. You would take care of it again. So that is what my position is. Now, why do doctors not understand? So I'll give you one more example. Another friend called. He actually is vaccinated. He was vaccinated in a trial in which they told him afterwards that, hey, we had actually given you the vaccine. He said, I want to have another vaccine. I said, why? And he said, because it is possible um, that it would be for the variants and those. And I said, no, you don't need to. It's These vaccines are not 
said to be against the variants. They're just general vaccines. So if you've gotten it, you're good. Unless, so this is what I said to him. I said, unless they are not certifying that you are vaccinated, and now you need to travel or sit somewhere and they want a vaccine passport, and that is why you need to have a paper right away and you want to have a vaccine, that's different. So he said, no, I can wait. They have promised that they would give me the certificate that I was vaccinated in the next two and a half months. But that is just, these are just weird things. There, there, there were three such calls. There was another call by a uh, cool bean who said that myself, I remember I actually managed them. Him, his wife, his father, his mother, they all had gotten um, the infection. I remember his father was old and he was, he had, uh, I think, diabetes and I managed them. We were very scared about his father's uh, possible outcome, but touch wood, uh, they were all fine. So he said, I've gotten him vaccinated. And now my mother does not want to have the vaccine. And I said, you didn't even need it for your father. I know that me saying this, being a pro-vax, causes the anti-vax to become upset with me. Or some vaccination folks become upset. Plus, YouTube-like folks become upset that, hey, why are you talking like this? We're going to ban you. But this is the reality. Nifty Rosa says, geared claims that these vaccines will do more harm than good because it's causing more variants. Variants are not caused by vaccines. <laughs> Francis, dogs in my neighborhood are all barking. They hear Luffy. I hear Luffy as well. He is actually so telling you a Luffy story. I want to show you something. So Luffy, yesterday I became very concerned that Luffy is lost because we saw Kyrie running around. Normally they are together. So she was trying to go into cupboards and trying to find Luffy, but she was not able to. So my uh, wife said, what is she doing? And I said, she's looking for Luffy. And I haven't, I hadn't looked, uh, seen Luffy yesterday evening for some time. So we started calling Luffy and Luffy actually, when he listens to his name, he wakes up and comes to you. So poor Luffy, he was sleeping. So he woke up and came to us. And when he's, uh, he was asleep, uh, asleep and then he wakes up, he's groggy. So he was all upset. And then he just started meowing and he would not stop. And my wife kept saying, why did you wake him up? So it was so funny. So let me show you something. This is Luffy. This is Luffy yesterday. So my mission in life is to find Luffy in weird things and, and tell on him to my wife. So look what Luffy was doing. So this is a bag of cucumbers. I love cucumbers. So this is these are my cucumbers sitting over there. And look at what Luffy is doing. He's actually trying to reach these cucumbers. <laughs> he cracks me up with his silly things. That is Luffy for you. And then he gets up and walks away. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're correct, Doug. And I don't help him. I just make his videos with these things. <laughs> Bobo says, Luffy is clearly an anti-vax, absolutely. He believes in diet and, and vegetables. Yes. So he does get... He does get these things. So he would then get up and just leave.
<laughs> he, he cracks me up. <clears throat> okay, so there's a question. Um, why do COVID vaccines cause so much concerns? Unlike other disease vaccines, is it because this is new and there is so, so less is less research? Correct. They are new, then there is so much of the rumors. There are some truth, then there are rumors, and then, then there is a uh, the, there is a behavioral problem with the um, with these organizations as well that are asking for the vaccine. For example, somebody who got infected has recovered. Leave them alone. They have an RT-PCR or they have an antibody test to say we are fine. Just leave them alone. Why are you pushing them for vaccine? Similarly, um, if they have gotten a comorbidity and they cannot take a vaccine, then don't create circumstances that they must get a vaccine. So there are, from the leadership, there are things like that that are happening. If the leadership had come to me and said, look, man, take your vitamins and take this ivermectin as well, and here is vaccine too. Uh, we think you should take the vaccine. We think ivermectin is not very useful. We think vitamin D may be useful. Uh, but sit down with your doctor, make a decision and go. Meaning if they had this kind of a flexible mindset where you felt that you are given some value and some control, I think people would be much better off. But when they think that those things that can help are suppressed and those things that are just vaccine are the only things that that is how the this irritation appears. Anthony says, please talk about spike binding to S2 and how it down regulates S2 blocks cleaving of NG tension 2. I have, Anthony, I talked about it a year ago. So if you look at my videos, there are two videos that are called hypercoagulability. So if you, or, or clotting, how does clotting occur because of uh, COVID? So if you see them, there are two videos in which I went in detail with this. Mary says, Scotty Bean, hit the like buttons. Yes, hit the like button. <laughs> Janu says, you mean like an adult conversation? Yes, there should be an adult conversation to say, here is how to, I thought they would make stalls and those uh, little, what are these called? Um, cabins on the roads and they would help people there and they would guide them. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. What are you you're concerned about? They, it's they dropped the ball on this big time. Super Knight says, "Are you Punjabi? Aho me Punjabi ya ki khayal hai uh, Brianna Dressen says, "Will you be willing to investigate the vaccines in another video with messenger RNA vector spike and other similarities in mechanism? I have done all of them. So we have talked in detail about the messenger RNA based vaccines, about four or five talks about it." Then adenovirus, in detail, the de mechanism and how to do the work. Novavax, subprotein-based va vaccines, and inactive vaccines as well. All of those mechanisms have been discussed in detail. Then I have done detailed discussions of the side effects as well. And this is where, when I talk about side effects of the clotting, I was the first one to talk about clotting in a more public and pushy way. And that makes some people very unhappy. But yes, I've done a lot of discussions. Maybe we should do it again, but I think I've done um, Drew says, hi, Dr. Mubin, have you looked at the vaccine adverse reaction data being collected by the CDC? How does the U.S. compare to other countries? Haven't done much uh, uh, data discovery nowadays. We'll have to. <laughs> Franz says, adult conversation, adult ch children are running the show. Absolutely. Eileen says, do you think NSE destroys spike binding to ACE? So remember, we talked about NSE. <laughs> there was somebody on Twitter who became very um, sticky to me and would continue to, uh, I do not know what was his problem, but there are all kinds of folks. So for every other tweet, he would simply say, Dr. Mubin would never talk about NS uh, NSE. He would let people die because he want to talk about ivermectin. And it just became so annoying that I finally blocked him. I try not to block people, but when they start insulting each other or when they go overboard. For example, a few days ago, um, 
one of the cool beans became upset with me on Twitter and he started um, posting things against me and I didn't do much. But then his followers came along and actually started cursing me. So I blocked him and not his followers who were cursing me. And, and his uh, wife asked me, she said, why did you block him? And I said, because he went and he was liking these. I am OK if people are cursing me directly. It is one to one. Fine. I can decide to block them or, or leave them. But when somebody goes and like them and then comes back to say, no, no, I don't think they are doing right, then that is odd. So back here, I've talked about NSE. So I blocked this NSE guy as well. Um, I talked about NSE in detail. NSE's pro important function is that it is it breaks bonds, correct? So sulfur bonds, disulfur bonds are broken by NSE. So wherever there is a bond, it can break. Now, does that mean that it can break the spike protein to ACE2 bond? I'm not sure. I have not read that. I have not studied it. Neither are these disulfide uh, disulfide bonds. Disulfide bonds are, for example, in our mucus. Disulfide bonds are in many of the proteins that are that are um, uh, that are folded. And to keep them in that folded state, remember, for example, when you have, let's say, a, a sweater and you are packing for the winter and you have rolled it up and now you want it to stay in that position and you put that in a bag and close it or you put something on it to just keep it in that state. So disulfide bonds are useful for that. But sometimes they become uh, they become zipped incorrectly and NSE like things can open them. That is a basic function. Now, does it do this function with spike protein and ACE? I don't think it will, but maybe. <laughs> Super Knight says, oh, Paji, <laughs> hello. OK, so <laughs> Super Knight says, oh, Paji, this is great. Thank you very much. I love Punjabi. So it is so funny that I'm a Punjabi by my by birth. So I, I was born in Punjabi. My mother was Punjabi. My father was Punjabi. I love Punjabi. So since I've been here in the US for decades now, I get very less chance to speak Punjabi. So if I find someone who speaks Punjabi, I just become very excited. Skyfrog says, I assume adenovirus vaccines have been used for years. Has there been thrombosis events with previous vaccine, but so rare that they're not reported? Actually, very good point. Um, if you remember, when I talked about Johnson & Johnson, and when these clotting discussions came up, I then showed the Johnson & Johnson again. Uh, I will have to search it at this time, but I have it, uh, the Johnson & Johnson's FDA debrief, in which they had said, that we have a concern. Our concern is the clotting. So they knew that this platform causes it. And they had already uh, said that this was their concern. So Rajendra says, most adenovirus vaccines need two shots. Why or how Johnson Johnson is sufficient in a single shot? What makes it different? Nothing. It's just the company thinking this would be sufficient. And during the trial, they're thinking the efficacy of 70%, for example, was sufficient. And those companies that say two shots, they have just reduced the dose in these two and split it to reduce the number of the, the amount of side effects. So this is really subjective. I don't think that they had an objective model there. <clears throat> Roller Girl says, where is Mojabi? Uh, Roller Girl, are you kind of catching my Punjabi? So it is Punjab. Punjab is the state. OK, so David says, in other words, could endotheliitis explain the systemic impaired microcirculatory function in different vascular beds and the clinical sequelae in patients with COVID-19? Yes. And we know that COVID-19 or spike proteins can cause endothelitis and vasculitis and cause local blood vascular issues, which would which could be um, clots or which could be compromised blood flow, which could be ischemia, even infarction, COVID, toes. We know those things. So yes, to your question. 
So with this, how about we stop for today? There's another question. Nina is here. Uh, Dr. Bean, have you known of any long haulers getting reinfected? Long hauler. Long hauler, no. That's an interesting question, no. So Iggy Pop says, do you like cricket? And if so, what is your favorite team? So <laughs> Iggy, very, I was the only one who did not know how to play cricket or played cricket. And the reason was that I have discussed it before. I, um, I was brought up by in a broken family state. So I was brought up by my uncle and he was a businessman. So majority of the time we would just do things with him. And in the beginning, because of the broken family, my mother and father both were rich independently. But when they separated, then children ended up in various places, including me with my uncle. So um, in the beginning, we were poor. So I didn't have a chance to play. Number one. Number two, I never went to a school. So normally you do cricket or those things when you go to school. So I was never... Uh, I never went to a school. So because of that, I never played cricket or, or socialized that way. I'm still kind of, I still do not have a um, matured way of socializing correctly. I'm still an oddball in that area. So I started going to college after my 10th grade that I did privately and fortunate for me that I had never studied anything during this time other than learning how to read and write. So then in 10th grade, I had to do the whole 10th grade. And then I had to pass the 10th grade exam to go to a good college. Fortunately, I, I topped in my Lahore board one part of it. And that allowed me to go to one of the best colleges in Lahore. And then from there, best medical college. So I lucked out. So uh, back to your question, cricket. I didn't have time for cricket. I was so busy either repairing washing machines or or doing kung fu or so so what I did was all the games that I played were short time games. For example, I loved playing squash and that would finish in 15 minutes half an hour. I loved playing badminton. I loved playing uh, ping pong. I still used to go for ping pong coaching here before the pandemic and then pandemic occurred and everything stopped. So uh, I was into school champion. So I went to school. I've discussed my, my story before. I went to school in ninth and 10th grade, end of ninth grade and 10th. And so I was an inter school champion of squash, badminton and ping pong. I love those. I still love squash, but <laughs> don't play it very often nowadays. So no cricket for me. And that actually kind of uh, works out for me as well because I don't sit in front of TV and I just don't have time to spend whole day or days for cricket. So Andre says, is Dr. Bean an American? Yes. So Plant says, King Edward College is one of the best. Um, yes, it, it was. Uh, at that time when I did it, it was top. Nowadays, there are um, Aga Khan and Bakai and others as well. But um, And at that time, King Edward used to take Pakistan's top 250 only. So I was, I was lucky that I was in those top 250. Guy Telfer says, do you play chess? I love chess. But once again, if it is fast, I'm fine. If it is going to take hours, then I leave it. So just like you saw that this long weekend, I could not go more than one and a half day without working. It gives me, I'm, I'm actually, uh, this is a pathological situation. I cannot not work. If I don't work, I cannot enjoy anything. I, becomes, I become nervous. I develop palpitations. But if I'm working, I'm comfortable. So that's, a, that's not a good thing. So I'm not being proud about it. But I can't spend my... Even these three days, I could not spend without working. I love ping pong. Um, I love it. So I would like to know what your medical opinion is on the concept of COVID-19 vaccinations being made compulsory. I don't think they should be compulsory. There are so many groups of 
people who may not need vaccines. For example, younger children do not need it. For example, people who had been infected before do not need it. And then there are people who need it. Mitra says, inspiring story. Yeah, thank you very much. Somewhere on Facebook, there is a video of mine playing ping pong. I love playing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I used to be a champion for that. It, it is so much fun. Although a few years ago, I had a business friend who came here from China. And I, in my little, I play good ping pong, I said, let's play ping pong. Man, he beat me so much that you cannot even imagine. He, he totally flattened my pride out. Joy. Hello. Cool. So with this, let's stop for today. We'll continue tomorrow. We got to figure out a way to um, we got to figure out a way to prioritize the topics, but we will uh, continue tomorrow. Super Knight says you should become a motivation speaker. What a success story, PG. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go fishing. So art patron, that is the only thing I've not done. I have not done fishing. And once again, all of my activities, you'll have to see if activity takes time, I'm not going to do it. If it is one hour, two hour, I can do it. Anything larger than that, and I would not do that. So Andrea says your pronunciation looks like foreigner. Yes. So for uh, I've been here in the US for a couple of decades or more. But before that, I was raised in Pakistan. So I have that Asian accent. Or, or some people actually say that I have a mixed accent now. So I've kind of, <laughs> it's nowhere now. All right. So with this, thank you very much, everyone. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we are behind on liking, subscribing, and sharing. So uh, either I don't do a good job or you don't like to like, subscribe, and share. Anyways, like, subscribe, and share. And if there are, if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. One is to buy me a coffee. You don't need PayPal. Another is to use PayPal to support this work. And another is to be a patron. Thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow.